Hey folks, Jerome Forsford here. It's 1.35 p.m. on April 6, 2024 in East Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. It's 12 degrees outside on a partly cloudy afternoon in the city. In this video, I'll walk for 2.4 kilometers starting in Mount Pleasant at Sun Hop Park. Then stroll north on Main, ending my trek downtown at Main Street Science World Skytrain Station. To support the channel, click the heart icon to send me a super thanks. For updates, follow me on TikTok and Instagram at jforestwood. And if you enjoy this video, smash that like button, share it, and subscribe. Hey folks, Jerome Forrest with here, over along Main Street here, in the Mountain Pleasant section of the South Main Business Improvement Area, or neighborhood as most people call it. <laughs> we'll keep walking here. In this area here we have a lot of different restaurants, thrift stores, and services for the locals. There's also some antique stores as well. That's what the area is predominantly known for. Looks like we got some nice little cherry trees in front of us here. Very beautiful. This will be the intersection of Main and East 16th Ave. And we are technically in East Vancouver. A lot of people when they refer to East Vancouver and will often refer to uh, the drive. Uh, East Vancouver is basically everything on this side of Falls Creek. That's on this side of Ontario Street. It's East Vancouver and the other side on this side of Falls Creek. The south of Falls Creek. On the other side, that would be the west side of Vancouver completely separate from the city west uh, the city of West Vancouver which is all the way across English Bay Harbor and the Burrard Inlet. I think the other the north of us. <laughs> yeah if you're in the area it doesn't hurt to come out now. Check out some of these restaurants. It's absolutely delicious food over here. I also just came from the Riley Park Farmer's Market. And we have moved into the spring season. And it looks like uh, the Trout Lake Farmer's Market, further east of us, has just opened up. So I'm going to have to head on over there next week and check that out. It's like AU Nuts it has its taster table out. These guys have good produ products in here. A lot of dried nuts and fruits. Very tasty. For a pretty good price. There's some stuff that's a little pricier and, some, and plenty of stuff that's affordable. It's like if you want to get like a nice high-end saffron. <laughs> some of the AUs you can get that in. And some of the AUs they've already just sold out. <laughs> It'll be like we don't have that. <laughs> And they have the cheaper saffron as well. I can buy bucket loads of. It's more for just coloring things like rice and stuff like that. Passing by Snackland, one of the few places you can actually get a Jamaican patty here in the city. Whew. So hard to get. Oops, I'm crossing against the light. That's okay. There is this patio over here, so there's no through traffic. But still. I should wait for the light. Uh, that's my bet. Not everyone's perfect. <laughs> a 
Let's keep a walk in here. No harm, no foul though. Now we're approaching East 13th Street ahead of us. And over here, we're at Center Point Mall. It's got a little bit of an indoor section, and then it's got a lot more of the outdoor section. There's a Save On Foods tucked in the back there. And it's the popular grocery store for this area. That in the Nestor Markets, which is further south of us in the other direction. We, of course, are heading north on Main Street right now. Here in Mount Pleasant, we can cross the street. <laughs> CGV 564884. <A> <laughs> You should know better. <laughs> you gotta wait for the pedestrians to cross. So if you happen to know that person, you can cheer for once, be like, <laughs> we saw your sloppy driving skills on Jerome Forrest. <laughs> and just give them a light mocking and then drop it from there. They'll be embarrassed. <laughs> Let's keep walking here. Main Street. Here in the South Main neighborhood. I don't have any. This is part of uh, Mount Pleasant. And Mount Pleasant is a common neighborhood name you'll find across several areas of Canada, not just here in Vancouver. And there's also Mount Pleasant over in Toronto. And in fact, it's so large, there's a West Mount Pleasant and East Mount Pleasant. This is the intersection of East 12 and Main, but over here in Vancouver, it's just Mount Pleasant. Vancouver has a population of 675,000. And of course, Toronto's population is inching towards 4 million right now. So just the city itself. A larger area is about 10 million for the greater Toronto area, or greater Toronto Hamilton area now as they're incorporating it, the GTHA. That ain't an acronym and new to say. Over here in uh, Vancouver, it's much more simpler. It's just Metro Vancouver, which is all the other cities, including Vancouver, all comprised together. And that's only about 2 million. And it's slowly inching up to 2.5. And uh, my numbers are slightly off. There might be another million here. We have a recently increased a country's population. Nine months ago, we had 40,000 or 40 million people in the country, and now we have 41 million people in the country due to an aggressive immigration plan implemented by our current federal liberal government. And of course, there's pros and cons in that. You're getting some people that are willing to be permanent residents here in Vancouver and go through the immigration process, which is absolutely awesome. We do need immigrants in the city, but we have another problem that <laughs> our, feds, uh, <laughs> our federal liberal government run by uh, <laughs> our illustrious PM. <laughs> uh, well, now they're trying to play. Now they're playing catch up because they don't have enough houses to uh, house uh, uh, our local Canadians, let alone uh, new immigrants. And on top of that, you know, you got refugees that come to Canada all the time, regular process because they're looking for a safe country to live in, and uh, temporary foreign workers as well. They do a lot of good work here in the country, including a lot of our farm work. So I'm just hoping that we can get uh, some houses built really quickly so that we can set everyone up in Canada for success, including our new permanent residents who have immigrated to Canada, and even our temporary foreign workers that really help out in places where Canadians just aren't willing to do the job.
And this is the intersection of East 10th Street and Main. It looks like it's our turn, so we'll cross. See how busy it is here. <laughs> That's my favorite idea. Uh, proposed by the opposition party. It's very, currently very popular across Canada, the Federal Conservative Party. They're proposing to tie infrastructure dollars for cities to, uh, to the number of houses built with people already inside. That seems like a, a great way to go. Of course, if the cities uh, build those houses, 15% more houses each year, and they get 15% uh, more infrastructure money. As you can see here, they're building a subway project right over here. So infrastructure money could be well used here just by building a few extra homes for people, making sure people are in them. Of course, if they don't build those homes, then uh, they uh, would lose 15% of their dollars, <laughs> infrastructure dollars. and. Uh, Seems like a nice little penalty too to really work on influencing home building because uh, Canadians have been complacent, including especially here in Vancouver, for years now. So it would be good to see some more homes. That's the idea I really like. Nice. Tying infrastructure dollars to homes built. Right now, our current Liberal Party is trying a few things, so can't say they're not trying. But uh, they're proposing things of only a year out from an election, or, or a little under a year out from an election. They're saying, hey, you know, like, we'll talk to the provinces and come and up with this big deal. And it doesn't seem to work. This is <laughs> it doesn't seem to work the same way because they're inching into provincial jurisdiction. And <laughs> they're doing things that the provinces have already said, no, nah, <laughs> we're not going to deal with that. You know? I'm trying to mandate the types of homes that are built and the types of uh, buildings that need to be built. Or, or like less and sure, I'm sure some of the buildings that they want to build would be great in some areas. But over here in Vancouver, we've got a lot of hills and mountains, especially in Mount Metro Vancouver. So. Yeah, a variety of different home designs, and probably more than anything the uh, current federal liberal government could think of. So. <laughs> uh, so I like the conservative idea because it leaves the responsibility of what homes get built to the cities who know best what to build. Of course, you can disagree with me. This is fair enough. <laughs> I'll keep walking here on Main Street. We're over by East 7th Ave and the Main here in Vancouver. There's a lot of people in Vancouver. I'm going to talk to them. They're just like, yep, that does sound like a better idea. <laughs> I'm leaning the same way I am. It's just interesting. Here's a Steamworks Brewing Company. This is their kitchen and tap house over here. Now, people don't always have to head on over to uh, Gastown, where their other location is. And they have a bigger factory where they do the brewing, and they have a little brew house in that one too. Can't remember where that one is. It's in some industrial area somewhere. And they do some of the brewing also over in their uh, gas town location. This is right next to Waterfront Station. And the downtown core. Very cool. City Motor Hotel. Uh, it's less of a hotel these days and more of an arts and business center. So you can come in here and they got little shops all the way through here. It's very, very cool. Over there. If you're in the area, come on over and check it out. It's 
it's not anything very big and flashy. Sometimes they'll have festivals on. You can see like different shops right here. There's the art shop right there. And then this is the pressure point over here. Not quite sure what they do, but it looks like art stuff. A lot of it's art. There's like hair studios down at the end here too. So, it's pretty cool. Good use of an old place. Old motorhome. This guy's doesn't look like anyone's come to buy this property yet. Build something there. And that's just because of all the red tape that cities have in place. Of course, our current mayor, Ken Sim, is really focusing on cleaning up Chinatown. If you clean up Chinatown, you have to clean up the downtown east side with where one of our biggest problems is here in Vancouver. And they're doing a lot of good work in that area. Of course, it's also trying to remove red tape for home building being able to get some excellent projects through the door, especially for uh, the Muskium, so they can build their uh, Jericho lands properly. Local indigenous group. This is the intersection over here is East, the East Fit and Main Street. So it'll be really nice to see that property there. A few newbies are trying to stop that development from happening. And it's nice to see that's happening. And they've also ensured that other uh, developments are happening in Chinatown and across the city. Making sure that they get green lighted and uh, they start getting shovels in the ground. Uh, and they're working very, very carefully on removing uh, those uh, regulatory restrictions. But it takes a long time to do that. Especially because the legislation often moves very, very slow here in Canada, whether it be the federal level, the provincial level, or the municipal level. Uh, and especially when they are also tied to other governments that sit in between, like the Metro Vancouver uh, level, where there's a lot of cities that still don't necessarily think the same way as, for example, uh, Vancouver, North Vancouver, and West Vancouver, uh, where they don't want to build new developments, like the city of Delta. It's kind of weird that the city of Delta gets to make some decisions at the Metro Vancouver level for the city of Vancouver, <laughs> especially since it's a small, little, little minuscule town to the far south of us. That uh, doesn't really have any major influence up here in Vancouver. <laughs> And it's all the tricky little different situations you have here in uh, the West Coast. Uh, and, uh, a lot of people don't often hear it. Unless you happen to live here. Because of course, there's uh, other provinces that have bigger populations, so you get a lot more attention on over in uh, Ontario and Quebec and Alberta, that type of thing. BC is currently the third biggest population, but uh, Alberta is quickly catching up. A lot of people moving over there. And yeah, a lot of people from Vancouver here that I happen to know. Out of that are moving out of the country. <laughs> One or the other. Let's head down. East third here for you. Quieter little strip. <laughs> Over here you get a mix of the different uh, industrial food factories and arts businesses. A lot of art galleries like to come into these areas because it's cheaper rent compared to a downtown location. There's some bread specialists right here. Or the Swiss Baker. Not sure if they're open today. They usually open during the weekdays. Yeah, they're closed right now. They're eight to five during the weekdays. And then auto, uh, auto companies and uh, 
Of course, across the street, you got the Work BC Center, too. So if you're looking for work, that's a, one place you can go for help. But so, even those people would be like, hey, it's really tough right now because we have a lot of extra people in the country now. So there's a lot of people going after jobs. We have a larger labor market, so we have more people who are willing to work than we have jobs right now. And due to that immigration predicament implemented by our current federal liberal government. <laughs> So, yeah, it's just tricky. We'll head down here. I believe this is Quebec Street. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it's Ernest Ice Cream right here. Cool. <laughs> and the Matt McClendon Co op across the street there. <laughs> I don't think our current federal government's <laughs> bad in any way, shape, or form. I just think there's a a better government in waiting who's going to do a much more competent job. And that would be the Federal Conservative Party. They're going to tie immigration to the number of houses we have, taking into consideration a mathematical formula of how many Canadians and the new immigrants we already have in the area. Okay, to make sure that they get homes first uh, before we bring more people in. So this is the intersection of East 2nd and Quebec Street. That sounds like a, like a more reasonable idea to me than just uh, bringing people in to uh, meet a quota and not have enough homes to help people be successful. <laughs> you know, someone who uh, used to work in the outdoor adventure industry and also uh, social services. Uh, always setting people up for success is something that I prefer to take into consideration. So for example, you can't get someone off of drugs if you they keep giving them drugs. So. <laughs> this, uh, what, can you, what can you say? <laughs> Same thing. They can't expect to put new permanent residents or even temporary foreign workers in the homes if we don't have the homes to put them in. And we're over here in the Olympic Village. <laughs> Let's push the button here. And we'll wait. Just waiting for the light to change here. We are at the intersection of Quebec Street and East First Ave. Ah, looks like it's our turn. <laughs> and uh, this area over here, the Olympic Village, some of these buildings were renovated. Some of them were built fresh back in just before 2010. The house Olympic athletes. Right, we're here for the 2010 Olympics. What's this person putting up? <laughs> oh wow! You got all kinds of people. <laughs> that person ahead of us there. <laughs> All kinds of people. Here in Vancouver. <laughs> oh, 
I'll keep a lock in here. So yeah, after the 2010 Winter Olympics, they were held here in Vancouver. They uh, and turned to these. There goes a sky train right ahead of us. We got some really good eyes. And the Expo Line sky train. And they turned these accommodations, absolutely beautiful accommodations, into condos and apartments. And a lot of people scoop them up. And after that, there hasn't been a whole lot of development here in Vancouver. And uh, they're starting some more. And we need office space, housing. Not just affordable housing, housing for people that just want to buy regular homes. And it'd be condos or even single family dwelling homes. <laughs> I'll keep walking here at Quebec Street. Or by the old Science World station. They had a trolley car or street car. Uh, went around False Creek and over to Granville Island and back in the day here during the Olympics. And then slurry after that they just uh, shut it down because well it cost more money to operate this and there was more people. <clears throat> riding the bus, finding that was faster to get around town, so we shut this down and of course closed off the tracks and fair enough uh, you gotta say at least Vancouver tried something and although it didn't work for more than what we needed at least it was tried sometimes if you don't try you'll never know And ever since, Vancouver's uh, put more money into its buses. And that's a rather well, really good uh, bus system. No matter how much the locals complain. <laughs> and we'll cross Quebec Street here. That street over here, that's Terminal Ave. Walk along Terminal Ave here and over into the station. Up ahead of us, oh Nelly. Oh Nelly. <laughs> there you are. Nice to see our, our transit police in here. Being awesome. You use your compass card and you tap on it. And when you get off the sky train, you tap on out. Looks like it's coming in one minute. So anyways folks, thanks for coming along today and just remember to share, like, and subscribe and I'll talk to you later, okay? <laughs> Have a good day.